Well, for more on the International Consumer Products Expo, I want to bring in John Gong. He's an economics professor at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing. He joins us now live via Skype from McLean, Virginia. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. So as we know, this is the first China International Consumer Products Expo. What are they hoping to achieve with this event? I think this is an event to um, introduce more international brands to the Chinese market. You know, we have this uh, consumption upgrade objective in the 14th five-year plan. I think the Chinese market is ready to uh, move on to the next stage. So I think this is a very good venue for the leading brands uh, globally uh, to, uh, to be displayed, to be exhibited here in China, and also, uh, I guess, to facilitate some transactions as well, especially for those quite expensive stuff. I mean, uh, the, the very expensive cars, uh, the yachts that I've heard of, uh, and, and, and also uh, airplanes as well, helicopters too. Um, you know, this is a great sign, I think. Yeah. And so you touched on some of the things we might see. So in terms of expectations of what we'll see offered, the number of attendees and participants, what are the hopes for this? Um, well, I think uh, the local government expecting a, a very good event. Uh, you know, the uh, attendance uh, is reportedly uh, going to be in the six figures. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, judging by the uh, number of exhibitors, you know, we're talking about hundreds of uh, uh, leading international companies, uh, as well as uh, times more indigenous companies from China as well. So do we know in terms of international participation, what sort of sectors or companies are really expected to make a strong showing? Um, well, this show is mostly about uh, expensive stuff. I think uh, luxury items take a large percentage. Uh, things like jewelry, uh, 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 you know, fashion stuff, uh, uh, consumer electronics, uh, automobiles, you know, these expensive things, I think, uh, will probably take a large share of the floor space at this point. So then who is the target market? Is it individual buyers? Is it big companies, business to business? Who is this tailored towards? I think it's going to be both. Uh, there will be uh, companies uh, going to the show, interested in representing these international companies, as well as, I would say, you know, wealthy consumers, uh, uh, you know, doing shopping or window shopping. Um, and, and I think, you know, this is going to be a very large market. Uh, as your program has shown, that, uh, you know, China's middle class is about the size of 400 million people. Uh, China is the world's largest consumer market. As a matter of fact, uh, the flyer from the Ministry of Commerce solemnly declared that, uh, you know, there will be $10 trillion worth of uh, imported goods and services into China for the next five years. I mean, $10 trillion is a large, large number. And as we know, this is being hosted in the tropical Hainan. Talk about what this region has to offer, as well as what this expo will bring to the local economy. Yeah, you know, Hainan Island is, is, is quickly becoming sort of the, uh, you know, the, the vacation mecca in China, equivalent of uh, uh, Florida, say, in the United States. I think this is particularly important because uh, Hainan has uh, introduced duty-free policies, tariff-free policies. Now, when you talk about importing these, you know, very expensive automobiles, helicopters and yachts, duty-free, you're saving a lot of money here. So I think this could be a huge market. Uh, the rich people here in China are going to rush to Hainan to, uh, to, to screw up these you know, very expensive stuff. So then how important do you think this event is to nurturing China's economic rebound when you look at some of its priorities like dual circulation? Um, absolutely. I think uh, to some extent, Hainan is actually uh, benefiting from uh, this, um, this pandemic sort of you know, passively. Um, it, it, this is because the money that I should have spent at this point uh, in Paris, for example, in London, for example, in Dubai, uh, in Hong Kong and in, uh, in Bangkok, for example, they are all now spent in Hainan. You know, you look at the uh, the number of uh, uh, airline uh, uh, flights to, to Hainan, I mean, the, the flights are all booked up. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are actually spending their vacations in Hainan instead of going abroad. So, in a way, it's actually benefiting from, uh, you know, this pandemic. But, and of course, moving forward, you know, we, we need this, the rest of the world to recover as well so that the China's economy could also uh, benefit from the global recovery. Uh, so, uh, in the short run, we're probably benefiting, especially the island is benefiting from the pandemic, but I think the long run, uh, China is, uh, stands to benefit from the entire recovery in the entire world. And you raise an interesting point about the timing of this event, given the current global economic conditions. Do you see this then in, in future years becoming something slightly different? 
Um, well, I think um, you know the, the, the these vaccines are definitely uh, uh, make a difference uh, in the leading industrial countries. Uh, for example, the United States is slated to recover very quickly. I think coming uh, the fourth of July. Uh, uh, Europe is, is following the full step. And look at Israel, the country that has uh, been fastest in terms of deploying these vaccines. Israel is, is poised to open an entire border very soon, in my view. Uh, you know, the, the number of new infections in Israel is in the single digit at this point. So I think, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, these vaccines are, are indeed effective and are going to make a difference in many parts of the world. And as the rest of the world recovers, uh, China will benefit definitely. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Always good to have you on. John Gong there, economics professor at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing.